Hi, welcome to Raw Online. I am Dr. Alice, Associate Professor in Microbiology. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about the overview of gastrointestinal tract infections. Synopsis of this lecture, we will be looking into the resident intestinal flora, the various gastrointestinal syndromes, the host factors which helps to resist the establishment of microbial infection, the microbial factors that helps to establish the infection, the predisposing factors, the pathogenic mechanisms, the various clinical manifestations and the laboratory diagnosis. So gastrointestinal tract infections is the second leading cause of death. Globally, 25 million people are infected with this enteric infections every year. It mainly affects the extremes of age, the elderly individuals and the infants who are less than 5 years of age and 4 to 6 million people die each year due to this gastrointestinal tract infections. So coming to the resident microbial flora, when you take the upper gastrointestinal tract it is sparsely populated with the microbial flora. If you take the oral cavity, it is populated with streptococci, whereas the stomach, it is populated with the lactobacilli, which can resist acidic pH. Coming to the lower gastrointestinal tract, the load of the microbial flora increases. As we go to the distal ileum, the microbial flora increases to 10 to the power 11 to 10 to the power 12 per gram of the fecal material. And the large intestine is superseded by the anaerobes when compared to aerobes. The ratio is usually 1000 in 1, 1000 is to 1. And these resident flora also has various beneficial effects like few of these microorganisms, they synthesize vitamins and they also don't allow the pathogenic organism to get colonized. So what are the gastrointestinal infective syndromes? We have diarrheal diseases. So diarrhea here, uh, the patient will have uh, uh, more than three stools per day and this is excess when compared to his uh, usual habit of passing stools. How, this is their definition uh, given by uh, WHO and coming to dysentery, here the person uh, will have diarrhea accompanied by uh, blood and mucus and also there will be fever, abdominal pain and also tenesmus. And next one is traveler's diarrhea. Here it usually occurs in uh, individuals who travel across countries and organisms like enterotoxigenic E. coli and few other protozoans like Entamoeba histolytica or uh, Giardia or Cryptosporidium, they can cause traveler's diarrhea. And then chronic diarrhea, here uh, the patient uh, will have uh, diarrhea for more than uh, two to four weeks. And uh, whereas in the case of gastroenteritis, here uh, there will be inflammation of the mucosa and uh, it will also be accompanied by diarrhea. And in the case of food poisoning, this is mainly due to the consumption of contaminated uh, food with uh, bacteria or the toxins produced by the bacteria.